voting is not as easy as you think. In a democratic system, any election is supposed to represent the will of majority. In order to quantify it, we widely accept the majority rule, which states that the winning candidate must receive more than half of all the votes. But there are some other equally reasonable voting rules, and their results tend to contradict each other and even produce paradoxes. So, in a majority rule voting, each voter chooses only one candidate who receives a score of 1 and the rest get 0. In a board account, the least favorite candidate receives 0 scores, the penultimate one gets 1 score, and so on until the top candidate receives the maximum number of scores, which is equal to 3 in our case. The overall winner is the one who received the biggest sum of scores. Right, so let's consider a particular example. If A, B, C and D denote candidates, let this sign be used to denote the preference. For example, this means that candidate B is preferable to A. Suppose we have 17 voters and their preferences are listed in this table. So, this table tells us that 8 voters chose A as their top candidate, while 5 voters chose B and 4 voters chose C. Let us now try and determine the winner using the majority rule. None of the candidates received more than half of all the votes, so we take top two candidates, A and B, and we see what happens in the second round. Here we assume that preference amongst the voters will remain the same. Thus, we need to cross out candidates C and D from our list of preferences. Right, so now we understand that B receives 9 votes and A only gets 8 and B is the winner. But let us now apply the board account. A, for example, will get 8 times 3 plus 9 times 0 scores. Calculating this for the rest of the candidates, we see that D becomes a winner and C takes the second place. Losers in one case become winners in another. There is yet another way for determining the winner the Condorcet method. It works by pairwise comparison of all the candidates. For example, consider candidate C. When we compare him to A, we see that he loses amongst 8 voters but wins for the other 9. When we compare him to B, the outcome will be the same. And comparing C to D also shows us that C receives more scores. Thus, the C candidate wins all the duels and he will be the winner by Condorcet rule. It may sound reasonable, but this method can actually lead to a paradox, where the winner can't be determined. Can you try and construct such a voting profile? So, what do we get so far? We have three different voting systems which all sound reasonable and just, but they all determine different winners. And now we will observe some even more surprising results, which demonstrate how elections can be manipulated. Let's go back to the majority rule setup. We saw how B becomes a winner, so suppose that candidate A decides to withdraw from the election. In this case, B enters the second round together with D, but D wins. Wow, so removing the second best candidate makes the projected winner lose as well. And now I want to demonstrate something extremely special. Let's have 17 voters and 3 candidates. Consider two different election profiles. The only difference is in the last row, where two voters have different preference on A and B. In the first profile, A and B 
enter the second round and A wins. But in the second profile, A and C will go to the next round and C becomes a winner there. Therefore, if only two voters are slightly influenced, the two leading candidates end up in a disadvantaged position. The two-round voting is by far the most popular way to quantify the will of majority in current state politics. But now we see that it is not the only possible system and that it can be manipulated. So, is democracy just an illusion?